Okay, so now we're going to the portion of how you can assess yourself of uh, what your body can do and if there's any painful or discomfort range onto the movements that we're doing. What I would suggest is in any case that uh, you do a certain movement, you experience pain and then just reduce that certain uh, range of movement. For example, we'll be starting with the neck. So purposes of the neck or functions of the neck muscles and joints is to teach you how to flex your neck, extending your neck, rotating towards your left, towards your right, and also doing a full circle of you tucking your chin, looking over to the side, then extending backward, looking all the way up, then towards the other side, and getting forward. So if you have tested that range and if uh, you experience any sort of pain, then just reduce the amount of movement you do. Let's say I'm uh, thinking as if I'm having a neck pain on my right hand side. So if I go through here, oh, there's a pain. I won't be fully rotating my neck. Instead, I'll just go through here. Then just do a small circle. Again, wanting to avoid that pain range. It's from a front angle, I'll show it to you how it looks like from a side angle. So from there, I'm just going to tuck my chin. Take my head to the side. Now I'm facing sideways. And looking all the way up. Neck extension. And over again to the side. Rotation and flexion as I flex my neck forward. Tucking my chin. Then reverse. As you can see there, my whole body is stable, so from this part of my chest all the way down, it's not moving. The only thing that's moving the muscles and joints around my neck. So doing that uh, neck circles, again, I'll put another rep for you guys. Going all the way back. Then return down through here, and then reverse that whole movement. Okay. Suggested number of reps on that one would be between 5 to 20 reps depending on how many you want to do but do at least 5 by all means. Next would be for the shoulders. Okay, So for the shoulders, another way to assess that one or one way to assess that one is uh, allowing your palms to face forward. The reason for that is uh, from a side angle if, I, if my body is so used to having my palms over here, it is so easy to roll my shoulder forward and if I do roll my shoulder forward I'm putting undue stress onto my upper back, lower back and neck. Okay? So palms facing forward this way to be able to roll our shoulder back. Maintaining that position and then just doing small shoulder circles on each arm. Okay? You can do one arm at a time, rolling forward, rolling back, or both arms at the same time. So from a side angle, it looks like this. So I'm keeping my elbow straight, just producing movement from this shoulder joint. So you can go forward, you can go backward as well. Forward, backward. And just repeating that movement again, 5 to 20 times for both sides. Another one for the shoulder to assist. And by the way, if you're doing this movement and if, if you experience any sort of pain, then just make the movement a bit smaller. The more you teach your body to handle that small movement, on the later period of time, or as time goes by, you might feel that your range is increasing and there's no pain or discomfort anymore. And if discomfort or pain occurs, I would strongly suggest to seek the help of a health professional. Next thing for the shoulder is uh, bringing it up. Okay, So first thing to do, Try to bring it as high as you can, okay? From a side angle, which is more important, is doing it this way. All the way up. So as you can see there, I bring my arm all the way up. This is what we call shoulder flexion, okay? Once I go to that shoulder flexion, it's important that we don't use our lower back uh, and our ribs to create artificial control. How does it look like? Say my uh, can only go this far, and for me to be able to go as far back, I would need to hyperextend my back and my ribs. 
what it will do to my body throughout the whole time is going to give me a lot of lower back pain, a lot of tightness or shortening of the hip, and undue stress for my neck as well. That's why try to keep your body as straight as you can from your feet, ankles, knees, hips, all the way straight up, and making sure that your hips are shifted this way and bring it all the way up. Okay, so try that one with the other arm as well. Do you have any pain or differences? If there's a pain when producing that movement, then just shorten the range instead of going all the way up. Only go through here. Then try to produce that same shoulder circle. Okay, you can go up through here, then shoulder circle from there. This is how it looks from a back angle. My elbows do stay straight, and it's just my shoulder that's moving around. I can feel the muscles here working. So do this one, five to 20 times on both sides. Next one would be doing a full circle on the shoulder, one arm at a time. So what you would be doing is keeping your ribs relaxed instead of your ribs flaring out. So it's quite helpful to place your hand over here. Placing one hand in front of the opposite shoulder, elbow stays straight, going all the way up, all the way up, all the way back. And the moment my hand reaches uh, around the shoulder level, I'm going to point my finger down to internally rotate my shoulder in, but not rolling my shoulder up. We don't want this one. So rotate it in, and from there, bringing it all the way back, all the way back, until my hand gets behind my hip this way. Then reversing that movement, keeping your shoulder pulled back, all the way up, all the way up, until I turn right where I started. I just want to show you guys how it looks like from a side angle. From that position, all the way up, all the way up, all the way back, all the way back. Try not to rotate your body. And from here, thumb down, bring it back. This is what we call controlled shoulder rotations. Okay, so it should always be in control. Again, five to 20 reps for each side. Okay, that's for the shoulder. On the next video, it'll be more on to the spine.